Well, hello. So today, I uh, I was planning to make this video a long time ago, but uh, just uh, didn't get around to do it. So um, today, I want to talk to you about uh, Abespeher controllers, because a lot of time I see questions that people don't know which one to use, which ones are available, and uh, how uh, how they work of course for this first we have to talk a little bit about uh, Ebus Pehar control protocols so um, this is the first thing that we need to know how our heater will accept starting signals so we can uh, we can divide this in three categories and some heaters will have uh, two or three interfaces and some of them will have only one or two so it's uh, good to know which uh, controller to choose and to know if it will work with our heater we have from a long time and this was the first protocol and let's uh, call it and this is how it's called actually S plus or S plus like this whatever it doesn't matter so this is the most simple starting of the heaters and this is just a plus 12 or 24 volt signal to the heater telling it to start okay and then from uh, about 2007 for air heaters and 2009 for water heaters we have the LIN interface and this is a digital signal to the heater which communicates operating uh, modes and times and temperature set points and so on so this is a digital signal and um, from I think 2016 yeah maybe 18 I think from 18 they used it uh, we have CAN and this is also a digital signal and this is used in mostly the new heaters and it will be I think the standard from now on okay so let's get into it and first we have this uh, little rheostat and this was uh, used to control air heaters let's see if we have a part open here okay so this is basically it you have a, a little rotating button which has a light and also a scale for the temperatures I mean temperatures not really the okay so this one could be that has also ventilation but uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't because with S plus heaters it was rarely almost impossible to achieve ventilation at some point so with this controller as you can see we have a lot of connections to be made we have a light and we simply turn on actually we have three positions here so maybe we have ventilation also okay so you would adjust the heating level one two three four to the max and uh, this is how you communicated the temperature setting by a resistance that is changing to the heater so this was an s plus interface 
because the heater received the plus signal to start and also received uh, a resistance which was translated by the heater's control unit to a temperature and um, this is when the heater knew when it should stop and also the temperature if we didn't use uh, an outside sensor was and it is until this day regulated by the by the temperature sensor that is on the ECU right at the air inlet of the heater yeah this is for air heaters and uh, I mean we could start also some um, water heaters on S plus with this but it doesn't really make sense because we can use a simple switch then so the problem with this one was that it uses a resistance track inside and uh, this is uh, somehow uh, not so precise because not all the time we have the same resistance on the track it depends mostly on the temperature inside of the cab so as the temperature would would rise inside the vehicle also the resistance would change the resistance of the track would change a little bit and for this we didn't have so uh, so precise temperature control so maybe it could be that there was four to five degrees difference between when we started the heater and we used the set point until until the heater reached that temperature this would also heat up and the resistance would change a little bit also affecting the set point okay this is purely all analog you can measure resistance right on the pins and so on and you know in which position the the slider is so this is i think the one of the oldest it's still available you can still buy it but i'm pretty sure that uh, it will be phased out soon because uh, in one presentation at Ebospeher they counted about 140 control elements currently um, kept alive and this is just not uh, economically feasible to keep all these generations of uh, control elements on the market okay so after after this one because of the temperature control problem the resistance problem came another and actually this was a little bit later almost this was i think uh, maybe one of the first digital controllers used with heaters and um, this could be programmed also it could uh, read out uh, failure codes and so on so this was a little bit step a little step uh, forward uh, we can we have two types of this this is for a water heater and the ones for an air heater also have a little um, set point uh, wheel here and uh, I'm sorry I don't have that one right now so but you can imagine there is a dial here to set the temperature and uh, this could also like I said could be programmed for operation and so on and um, this coexisted I think with this one for a while and today it is still 
alive in some older trucks and some older projects like trains and so on but uh, these control units are getting phased out this year so production is stopped for them and well we need to move on also uh, some voices say that this was developed together with the bus tow <laughs> because both companies came out with the uh, same controller of course the branding is different but they had pretty much everything the same even the connections were the same so yeah it cannot really be a coincidence I think okay so this was the combi ur this is how the Germans called it and uh, well this is just a little bit of history now you I don't even recommend to mount this even if you find it somewhere because in the near future this will not be produced anymore so the next simple switch is uh, mini regular this is how we call it and this is uh, somehow a digitally let's say a digital uh, upgrade to this one and in this case we can uh, we have also ventilation heating and also like on the other one we can set the temperature with this slider and this really works very hard I don't know why considering it's brand new ah, ah okay so it's just a little bit of it's too new, it's too new. so what uh, Evospe heard it here is that uh, all this analog resistance surface was transformed to a digitally um, communicated set point so it still sends out a resistance to the heater it will still start the heater with S plus also this one is an S plus starter so just a simple plus and uh, the set point is transmitted I mean a resistance is transmitted because you have uh, behind 1.7 kilo ohms which for air heaters is about uh, 6, 8, I think 8 degrees Celsius and to 2.2 kilo ohms and this means uh, 36 degrees so if we communicate a uh, resistance value to the heater to let's say 2 kilo ohms that's uh, I think we can make a middle it's about 20 degrees I think I will not uh, calculate this so this was the next step and here the resistance track is gone and uh, everything is done digitally inside so uh, it the temperature inside of the vehicle will not affect the set point on this one but um, if you want to measure the resistance on this track and what is communicated to the heater you will have to power up the, the controller and this is how you will measure the resistance it doesn't work if the, the controller is not powered up so that's the only way you can check it okay so and also in this case there was the external sensor and um, you can use it also this is mainly for air heaters because there is no reason uh, communicating a set point and you cannot communicate a set point to a water heater water heaters only know start and stop it will not control any temperatures okay so and this is available I think maybe 10 
15 years from now because it's easy and in some markets the customers only want this it's simple the driver only has three buttons and there are no settings he can do here he cannot mess with the heater settings so everything is simple and yeah almost and cost effective because this is uh, right now the cheapest control element available and it's mainly it's preferred but yeah everything uh, so when this was it everybody liked this when this when this come came out everybody wanted this one because it was more simple and uh, after this was introduced everybody wanted this one and then we went on to the select the first digital controller and when the and when this came out everybody wanted back this one so it's just a, i don't know i think how people get used to it but anyway this will be the mini regular will be available for a long time now okay so moving on moving on to our days and uh, mm, i'm gonna focus focus more on uh, what is available now and uh, what you should buy because um, all other the older controllers are just getting uh, really hard to find some of them will be phased out and um, it's it's just uh, not worth it economically because some of them will be much more expensive than the ones that we have uh, today on the market so the most simple one is easy start select of course after the mini regular and um, this is really simple you have only three buttons and uh, this is what we sell a lot to air heaters because the customers love it they can see the temperature inside outside they can set the temperature they can use it on ventilation and so on so it's really simple and um, i know in the uk there is the 801 which uh, basically is this select with a temperature sensor built inside so if uh, you want a more flexible uh, installation like you want the um, controller in one place and you need a set point in other place than the controller i think this is a more flexible installation you can use the select and a different temperature sensor the price as i have seen it's about the same so uh, well it mostly depends on where you live in in the uk you will probably get the 801 so let's take a look inside we will look at the controller i will not take it out of the box this is it really simple on off button a confirmation button is the same and also you can navigate through the menu and set the temperatures with the two arrows mm, what is also to be known you can start the heater and also stop it with a long press on the on off button and it will start with the last temperature settings that it had before now this is why it's preferred by bodybuilders because you only have to connect three wires so you have plus minus and you have the diagnostics wire and this will work on the lean interface so we are moving a little bit forward in time and here the heater is started with the LIN interface which is also used for diagnostics and it is actually the diagnostic wire that starts the heater also set point 
and the operating mode everything is communicated through the diagnostics wire through the heat to the heater and from the heater to the controller and yes this also means you can read out error codes for fault codes with this controller now how you can do that it's uh, I don't know if uh, this information should be given out to users because just one thing and that is overheating and if a heater has some overheating problems and they are not solved by just clearing 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 the faults all the time uh, maybe you will get a point that the ECU gets defective for all from all these uh, repeated overheatings and eventually the heater will catch up on fire and it's not something I I want to have on my mind that I showed you guys how to clear error codes with this one I can say the information is out there on the internet you can google for it uh, it's uh, it's really your thing but I have to warn you if you have repeated errors please before you just clear and clear the the faults try to solve them because it can be really dangerous okay so the next one and this family is called TP7 so uh, and we use them today and I think they will be available for a long time now the next one in the same family with a little bit uh, more functions is the easy start timer so as you can see the appearance is the same the same color is used and so on and um, with this one this one is a little bit more uh, advanced and of course you can do programming for where the he when the heater should start also heating ventilation you can also have two heaters connected to this uh, controller and so on so it's really complex but if you don't need programming and you don't need um, all these advanced functions you should stick with the select it's just fine okay and also this one uh, I will show you just in a minute well here the connections are a little bit uh, trickier depending on what you want to use but if you want to use it for a simple air heater or a simple water heater with uh, simple I mean by lean interface you will have to connect only those wires so just like the one before plus minus and the blue white wire should uh, start the heater just fine but in addition to that this controller can also start on S plus so this is what we usually uh, offer for water heaters that are started with S plus because this controller can do S plus while the select cannot the select works only to diagnostics the timer will work both on diagnostics and on S plus depending on what we need and uh, how we set up the controller so it has a lot of settings um, that can be made in the service menu and uh, depending on what we want to use it for we can also uh, connect let's say a temperature sensor not this one it's a different part number um, we can connect the temperature sensor directly to its wiring and we can set up we can start the if we can start the heater with lin with the 
diagnostic interface we have a temperature sensor connected to it then we can set up temperature control for water heaters so if you have a the sensor inside the car and uh, you want to control some fans or some water pumps or something like that to heat up, heat up the inside of the car you can do it by connecting a relay to the yellow wire in this case it will not be as plus it will not be to start the heater it will be to put out a plus signal to a relay which can start the fans stop the fans or whatever you connect to it ultimately depending on the temperature sensed by the sensor that is connected to the display and this is really good because uh, when you reach the inside temperature the one you set the the fans will stop or a second water pump will stop but the heater will work on until it uh, gets to 71 80 degrees depending on the heater and only then the heater will shut down so in this way we avoid starting and stopping the heater according to the inside temperature because uh, for water heaters it doesn't make sense and there will be a lot of short cycles and uh, this will reduce the lifetime of the heater so this is for more complex uh, installations you can set up two heaters you can set up two heaters both on diagnostics you can set up one heater on diagnostics and one on s plus and so on so it's uh it gives you a lot of options yeah also it can read out error codes also for two heaters in fact if you have two on the diagnostic wire you can do temperature control for water heaters it can be programmed it can do well actually I think this is uh, a smart, I think this is the smartest one Ebospeher has at this time, which is uh, that you can use in the car connected directly to the heater. And it goes the same, pushing, long pressing the button, the on button will start the heater immediately on heating with the less set settings pushing the uh, empty button as I call it, it long long press it will uh, stop the heater or whatever is started so you don't have to navigate all the time to the menu if really you just want to start the heater like you did yesterday or the day before okay I really like this one, it gives you a lot of options, of course, when you need them. If you don't need them, go for something simple, yeah, okay. The next one is a remote. So this is remote plus because it has a display, we also have a just the remote with just two buttons I don't have that one on stock because we rarely sell that because between between this one with the display and the other one without it's not such a big price difference that it's worth buying the other one because you have a lot of feedback on this one and on the other one is just some LEDs blinking red or or uh, green and you have to know from that so in my case uh, anyway if you buy a heater an installation kit uh, you want a remote it will be not such a big price difference between this one and the other one without the display uh, i can show you it should look like this so it only has two buttons but this is from a previous generation TP6, TP7. So, um, and one, what I can say, if you lose a remote from the, you lose the station, uh, the mobile component from this, it's almost only the remote is the 
same price almost maybe 10 euros difference as buying the whole kit now as new so in my opinion if you lost your remote i think it's better to buy the new one replace it all together okay so uh, the simple remote not this one the one just with two buttons will work on lean so on diagnostics and only recently it has been updated to work on s plus so it was a <clears throat> i want to say a problem with them before because most of customers wanted s plus and they didn't have only lean <clears throat> and there was problem starting some heaters but from this year maybe last year from summer i think the simple remote was updated to have s plus also okay so this one i will just show it to you because the menu and the what it can do it's pretty same as this so everything that the timer can do the remote can do also so it's the same interface the same menu the same operation everything that can be connected to the timer can be connected to this one temperature controls of water heater and so on so on. so um, it's pretty much the same but the advantage is that you have only this in your hand sorry a lot of boxes here i hope you can see this yeah okay so this is the remote it's nice it's robust it's made of really hard plastic so it's not something uh, so fragile yeah the battery is isn't mounted just uh, the customer or the insta who installs it will mount it when it's got sold this is the battery you need and this one is made out of two parts because this is the stationary unit that you have in your car so this needs to be mounted and connected to the heater and of course this is what you can uh, use for starting and stopping the heater it also has the antenna which must be rooted inside the car it has a temperature sensor yeah so you can read out the temperature inside of the vehicle uh, it's not used for control only if only if it's used to control the air the uh, water heater to control something uh, of fans or water pumps like I told you before on the on the yellow wire unless you if you connect a air heater I suggest you do not connect the sensor because you will have uh, different readings than the ones from the heater so yeah but on water heaters you can use it to see what temperature you have inside the car and you also have a button as this and this will start the heater with the last settings that you done before stopping it and also this will light up to show you that the heater is working it's, or it started or it's off because you only have the feedback on this one so even if your battery runs out and uh, the last setting was I don't know 21 degrees Celsius for heating if you press this button the heater will start with the same settings as uh, the last one on the remote so this is good to know okay this is what this unit is made up of a lot of components here yeah so i will move on i will put them back together after we are done yeah and this one is from i think this one i left them outside 
Okay, never mind. We will arrange them after that. Okay, so I'll show you this one. It's uh, the previous generation. Okay, so we are done with the TP7 and now the newest generation that, like I told you, we also have CAN on the new heaters, Electronic 2 and Hydronic S3 and also there are some rumors of Electronic 3 so I think uh, it will be the same. So the first thing that we have on CAN is the Easy Start Pro and this and this is this will start heaters only on CAN so it doesn't have any other interface just CAN and uh, the menu and the programming and operating principles is about the same as for the timer but of course with a little bit of differences on the design so you have a push and rotary button for confirming and navigating to the menu and you also have a back button what is new from all the others control all the other controllers that this one has an interior temperature sensor so you can control the heater from this sensor or the one that is mounted inside a heater and you can choose this uh, when you first start the heater in the setup menu there is a setup wizard that will guide you through and you can choose this heater to control the temperature and also the connection is quite simple you already have a plug on it and this is what you connect to the heater's harness and the other the other one is to connect the the another temperature sensor if you want want a temperature sensor in another place you can connect these two wires and uh, then the easy start pro will automatically move the control of the temperature to this to this uh, sensor of course this is very good for air heaters but uh, for water heaters it doesn't have the temperature control that we have on the timer so I kind of uh, wanted it to be like that but it's not the interface is really simple it's just can and this is the only thing you can do with it to start the new heaters So for air heaters, I think it's okay. You can do most of the programming, read out fault codes, delay them, so on, so on. So I think it's okay. I like the timer better. And this will be only cam. And there is no uh, other thing you can connect to it. Of course, this will be really confusing because of Ebba Space her dust heaters and uh, yeah let's move on and uh, I will talk about that at the end of the video so this is Daisy Star Pro only can only heaters from 2018 and this is when uh, Airtronic 2 had the start of production and also the Hydronic S3, the CS version. We will talk about this a little bit. Okay, so this can be used at water heaters, some water heaters and the new air heaters. Yeah, let's move on. And we have another one that is uh, available. And this is what will actually replace the remotes or it should but 
This is only available in, available in a few countries and our country, where I live in Romania, we cannot sell this because we don't have uh, the payment service for for this uh, for this controller. This is Easy Start Web. It's based on uh, internet. Currently, it's 2G, and this is all already getting to be a problem because 2G networks are getting turned down by operators because nobody really uses use them anymore. So there is uh, some kind of update that will be done to the controller to support 3 and 4G. Yeah, currently I don't know when this will happen, but yeah. So the you can use this based on a subscription. It has a phone app also on Android and iOS and it's totally through the internet and uh, you can really you can do a lot of things with this controller it's really it's really smart i would say but it's not available everywhere and this is a problem and uh, i don't know if or when will this be solved so anyone can have access to this one i mean you can buy it in a country where it's supported and if you have someone there to pay the the yearly the yearly how do you call it subscription to it then um, everything's fine it will work in most of uh, Europe countries so there is no problem the roaming it's uh, inside the unit so it will connect to any networks in the available countries and and it should work so even if you buy it in let's say germany it should work in hungary romania bulgaria also so it should work in the whole european union and uh, this is just uh, what you have in the box is the controller that you mount inside the car there is no antenna so the antenna is inside is inside of the the unit you have the same button like on the remote and the same sensor and uh, the other part to control it is your phone through an app that you can download of course you have to make you have to make uh, an account on Everspayer and also uh, a service shop must activate your device for the first 30 days and that's free and after that you will have to pay the subscription or the service will stop and this one this one has all the interfaces now the model from last year when it had the update this this one it's not updated yet and we don't even use it we had it in a show car but what's the point if we cannot sell it just show it yeah this is nice but we cannot sell it okay so um from last year with a software update the hardware is the same this unit can control heaters through s plus Celine and Trucan. So with this one everything works and uh, you can connect two heaters, you can have it connected to, together with an Easy Start Pro and so on so the, the applications are a lot of them. Also you can uh, with this one the service shop you can generate a service code and the service the workshop can go inside and read out error codes, make settings, do the firmware updates and so on. So this one I think it's uh, really for the future but yeah we are just waiting it to be available everywhere. So this pretty much covers everything about Ebaspeher controllers and uh, all these interfaces are 
seem to be a little bit complicated but you need to know the heaters you are using and the main problem is so Airtronic 2 heaters usually have S plus have lean and have can interfaces this is for 12 volts for 24 volts you only have S plus and can so you cannot use any device that's on lean here you can only use let's say the mini regular and the easy start pro and 24 volts doesn't have uh, lean because of adr mode and so on we will not go into that and you will have hydronic three heaters also let's say 12 volt and 24 volts and here's where, where the confusion begins because you have CL heaters and you also have CS heaters. Now what does this mean? This means that this variant of CL will work with CAN and LEAN but the problem is the CAN here is not for starting, it's just for diagnostics. So you only can start the heater to LEAN and do diagnostics through CAN yeah and the other one is CS and this one can start on CAN so this one will start on CAN and also will start on S plus and for the 24 volts I believe we only have CS so only CAN and S plus so it's a uh, really good to know all these things before choosing the heater and uh, choosing the controller so you know which controller you can combine with which heater and uh, it's a handful i know so uh, whenever you are in doubt or you're not sure i advise you to ask somebody from Everspeher or a workshop that knows these things so you will not end up with something that you cannot use. Yes. So, this is pretty much it for today. One little bit extra. We have a controller from Russia. Our colleagues from Russia developed a controller. This is not officially sold through Ebospeher, but I don't know when or if it will be. This controller it's uh, pretty amazing, it's pretty awesome and it does things that none of them this, none of, none of the other one do. So this can also control a climate unit, so an air, condition, air conditioning unit for the passengers and it can also control heaters. So this is pretty, pretty nice, so this will control AC. This will control control can uh, heaters. This will control lean heaters, and this will control S plus heaters. And also, it has modes that this on auto mode will uh, you will set a temperature of 21, and the controller will start the AC or will start which heater is connected here and uh, this one detects uh, all the heaters connected to it when it starts up but you can also deactivate them from the menu and so on so this is just uh, something interesting for us we are trying to use it in some applications but from that point of view the controller is really is really nice it can do a lot of things and you can see that by the number of wires we have here and uh, yeah why not i think i think the unit looks good and uh, works great we have tested it so everything is here i will not talk a lot about it because it probably won't be available for a while in all the countries so this is just something uh, interesting I wanted to show you 
yeah so guys this is it for today uh, I thought this video will be shorter but uh, I, I seem to talk too much sometimes anyway I hope uh, that you understood something out of this video it will help you or at least give you uh, a view on what it's available what you should you choose for a heater or if not at least know what to ask about if uh, you are in a decision of buying a heater changing your control unit and so on so by this i want to thank you all for watching and uh, please like share subscribe to the video i will try to make some more in the future currently it's summer and we have almost no heaters in the workshop to repair yeah we will see what else we can do okay so thank you for watching guys stay safe and uh yeah see you next time bye bye